Well, this is today's project. This is the backup camera, not the actual camera, but the screen uh, off of our XB, which has been in operation for a total of about two and a half years now. And the screen's worked fine. Uh, once we got the second one in, it worked great. Uh, but it's supposed to jump up and it doesn't anymore. In fact, it's pretty much locked down. Uh, at one time one spring went and now the second one has failed and I, I can't get the screen up at all. So I'm going to take it apart and see what went wrong with it. Right, I seem to have two screws on the base. This is I had a foam pad in there, which is what this is, and I had it spray glued to it. And it stuck nicely for a couple of years. Uh, didn't want to come off though. I'm going to leave the foam in place and I'll just work around it. So take the screws out. Always find the biggest screwdriver you can that fits the screw. Then you won't round it out. See how many screws are actually holding this on. It looks like two, but you never know. There could be stuff hidden under these little things. So we've got two tiny screws so far. And I think there's more. I'm going to have to go searching. Yeah, there seems to be one Seems to be something about here. And I bet there's another one under this. Yeah, I bet there's another one under here. Okay, so I'm going to go peel these off and see if I can find two more screws. So, as I suspected, there was a screw under this quality sticker, and there's another screw under this quality sticker. So we'll take those off, see what we come up with. Alright, so peeling the cover back. Wow. Massive integrated circuit. Ooh, I see there's a there's actually a steel spring in here underneath this tie wrap. So it does actually have a steel spring. Oh, but it's got a plastic rod that goes through it. Ah, okay. Let me see if I can see that plastic rod going through it. Looks a bit bent, doesn't it? I bet it's not meant to be bent. I bet it's supposed to be straight, but you know what plastic does with heat and time? It breaks. So, even though it's got a steel spring, which is probably still in good nick, the hinge point's broken, so that's why it's not working. Okay, uh, more dismantling, if I can, see what I can do about this. And there are a couple of screws in these holes here that hold this little plate down on the side. A little tricky to get out. There it is. That's on one side, and there's another one over here. This, the hinge, uh, there are two screws, one in that hole, one in this hole, holding that hinge down, and there's also a couple of screws holding this down. So I'm going to take those out and see what happens. So there's a little um, spring under this one. I'm looking at, I see another spring in there too. So I'm taking a picture of this, so basically I know what it looks like before I take it apart <laughs> so that I can get it back the right way. Alright, so there, there's the tiny parts. This one went in that way up. And, oh, this one went in that way up, so the little tang was hanging over the edge, but I'm going to lay it on its side around that torsion spring, put a lot of load on it over all that time and heat and uh, being it's plastic it does what plastic does and it yields and gets out of the way and if I can make something up out of a dowel or something okay so in my search for a replacement for the plastic piece uh, bent I found this IKEA Ooh. But everybody's got one of these, one of these IKEA Allen wrenches, and the spring, this uh, torsion spring, fits over it perfectly. Um, it's a little tight for the hole, so I'm going to try and put this thing in the hole. It doesn't quite fit, but I can probably drill that hole out just a little bit, so that it will fit this perfectly as well. Then I'll have a lot more area to file flat. Now to put that flat on and get those screws in there. I 
think that might be the ticket. And if that doesn't work, then I'll go back and use the brass rod, which is a bit smaller. Alright, so I'm measuring up the part here, and I need a piece that's about two inches long, roughly a quarter inch flat on each end, and that should give me plenty of room. It should fit between those two bosses, and then it'll run on this hinge fine. So yeah, that'll work. So two inches long, quarter inch flat on each end, and then I've got to drill a hole to suit the these tiny little screws. Okay, so that tiny little screw is two millimeters diameter, and when I pull the drill out from my drill set, this is a five five sixty fourth drill. So which is also roughly around two millimeters, so that'll probably work. So what I did is I put a little saw cut where the quarter inch mark is, and I put the corner of the file into that saw cut, and I'm gradually rotating the file down as I'm uh, doing the filing. Stabilize my workmate with my knee. I'm going to keep doing this until I get halfway through. So you do want to keep checking, uh, checking your work as, as you're going through. This end had the hex on it, so I've got to get it down to a... There's a line I have to get down to on that end. I think this side I've already got there. So I just need to get there on this side, so I've got to concentrate the filing on this edge which is going to be the near edge when I put it back in. Yeah, I was reminded just then when I picked this up, it, well, it gets hot when you're filing so be careful when you're picking things up. Okay I'm down to two point, oh two millimeters and this shaft is four point four, four point five, something like that. So I am halfway through so I'm stopping right there and I'll do the other end. Okay, so here's the part with the stuff filed on one side. It's pretty even, probably within a couple of degrees of uh, getting it right. Now the part is about just under 50 millimeters long. So yeah, 49 and change. The distance between the two holes, I just went and measured it, comes in at 45, maybe a tad less, about 45 millimeters, which means I need to go about two millimeters in from this end, two and a half millimeters in, stick a hole and then come up this end 45 and put another hole. So I'm going to use my center punch to center where the screws are going to go, now yeah, where the drill is going to go, and uh, that's the bit I'll be doing next. Okay, so I've set the little depth calibrator on the end of this to two and a half millimeters. I'm just going to push it in until I hit the plastic. Then all I've got to do, because that's lined up the edge of the plastic with here, is get the center punch on. Let's try that again. Precision is, is important now, so that measure once, twice. Do. Give it a couple, make sure that the drill point doesn't wander. This is an automatic sender punch, they're actually pretty cheap over at Harbour Freight. You can pick them up for a couple of bucks, maybe five. Okay, this one's got the hex on the back of it, so it's, it's actually quite hard to send a punch, it keeps slipping away. So I've got the mole grips on it, and let's see if I can. Pop a few center punch holes in the same spot, that would be really nice. Oops. 
steel is harder at this end. Not even much of a dent. That would have been caused by them forming that hex on the end. It's harder than the steel. Okay, so that's a bummer. I was trying to drill it with my steel drills. Yeah, they're actually supposed to drill steel. Wouldn't touch it. Um, they just drill just wandered all over the place. So looks like I'll be making the piece out of that brass rod and not this uh, steel one. Oh well. Still it's gonna be better than plastic. All that effort. Now I get to that was good practice. Now I'll do it on the brass one for real. Alright, finally got a brass one, two holes. Hopefully the uh, hole spacing's right. Let's go see how it fits. Okay, so despite careful measuring, this hole is lined up over here. But this one, I don't know if it's visible, is off by about a millimeter. So I'll have to ream the holes a bit with the drill. Alright, so I've got the screws in, although at quite a bit of an angle. I've got the spring back on, There's, there was a catch behind it, so the only thing now I've got to do is get these loose ends. There's an end on that, so this spring here, and there's one on this side. And sneak it underneath these tabs, which is where that spring goes. Alright, so to get, the, get that spring back on, I cut a slot on the end of that hinge right there. I'm using that to push that spring back on and I've got it behind the tab so all I've got to do is push it across now and it's locked in and I should be able to do the same with the other tab. So I'm going to put this on. Oh, I need to get that out of the way. Use something blunt, not that pointy, pointy knife. Come on. A little fiddly. Okay. I can't do it with the camera in the way. But you get the idea. Oh, did I do it? No. Okay, I've got to do it without the camera in the way. Sorry. Okay, so I've got both springs back on. So I should be able to fold the screen in and push it flat. It's a little stiff. Because there's some plastic that's interfering. I think it's because the shaft is too small. But I think it'll work. So I'm going to put it all back together, including the latch on the front. And we'll give it a go after that. Alright, so I've got the latch reassembled, the covers in, and this is in. The only thing I'm not putting on yet is the big cover. I'll do that after I flip it open and give it a test. So that's the screen, how it's meant to look. Should be able to push it back drop it down, and it's meant to latch. And you push the button, and it jumps up. Wow, fixed it. Holy crap. And down, jump up. Yay, fixed. Now all I've got to do is put it back in the car. No problem there. 